What's up guys, I'm Dunmere, top 100 tank player, and I'm going to tell you guys how to play D.Va in this guide. So first, I'm going to run through and talk about what changed with Overwatch 1, the Overwatch 2 for D.Va, and then I'm going to talk about a general playstyle for the character, and then I'm going to go and do an actual breakdown of a professional Overwatch League player, Smurf, who plays for this whole Dynasty's gameplay. So, starting off, what changed between Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2? So D.Va got actually like a decent amount of changes because she's a tank character. She got her amount of armor and health changed. Now she has 300 armor and 350 health, which is a lot more tanky than what she used to be. So that was changed in addition to her primary fire having a reduced spread, meaning she does more damage at, more, at longer ranges essentially. And so it was changed from four degrees to 3.5 degrees. So a pretty substantial change with that. Her primary fire used to reduce her movement speed by 50% and now it only reduces it by 40%, meaning that she can chase things down a lot more when she's built onto something and she's just trying to walk and fire at the same time. So while the changes were decently substantial, the real changes for D.Va are really just the fact that she doesn't have a tank to play alongside her anymore. She used to be played very frequently with Reinhardt or Winston, and so she wasn't the main the main focus of fire but now she is so that's the main thing that changes about her and that's what we're going to talk about how you are going to have to adapt your playstyle playing like that so um like i said because she used to have these other tanks she used to have a winston or a reinhardt to support her and be like the frontline tank when she was the off supporting tank she doesn't have the ability to do that um in the same way she used to be able to play from a high ground control angles and just mark things that are going off on the side and support her main tank but now she can't do that. So she basically gains more of this tanky responsibility. Um, and so you do, you're going to see D.Va playing a lot more to like frontline damage, not just as pure like I'm just going to go stand out and pretend I'm a Reinhardt. But um, because of the tankiness she's gotten and because of the fact that sometimes you do need to stand in front of the enemy team and try and like stuff them in a choke point or contest car or something like that. You're going to see D.Va doing that a lot more often because she's tankier and can, but also just because it's her responsibility. So, um, There are fewer stuns now in the game too, which make her a lot more able to be aggressive. In Overwatch 1, she had things to deal with that would just stop her from being able to push super aggro into teams. And now she can do that with higher likelihood of being successful, partly from the tankiness, the extra tankiness she's gotten but mainly just because you don't have as many stuns and uh, things to stop her and punish her when she's dove in. So um, this, along with her higher damage output, makes her have an even more high focus of being a dive tank. And so she plays very similar to like how Winston used to do, sometimes contesting the enemy's front line, but really primarily looking to dive onto things. So whenever a fight's starting to devolve, whenever there's an opportunity, Diva's going to want to dive onto something and burn it down and kill it with her primary fire damage and her missiles. All right, um, now we're gonna talk about how to play the character. So as I said, it's okay to poke front lines a little bit, as long as you're not taking too, too much damage from the enemy, but that's not the main thing you wanna be doing. You basically are gonna be looking to like, poke a little bit, but as soon as you see an opportunity where there is a DPS hit scan usually, split from its team or a support player who got low trying to push through a choke or something like that, you're going to immediately dive onto that. So you're going to push onto these sort of aggro plays and try and secure kills, try and force the enemy into being weak so that the rest of your team can kill them and just looking to in general frag out. That's your general responsibility as D.Va and that's part of what makes D.Va so powerful. So you're going to be looking to dive them, use your micro missiles to buff your damage so you're hitting them with your primary fire micro missiles. And then you're going to be using your defense matrix to feather it essentially to pop it a little bit as you're going in pop it to try and dodge like a, an honest sleep dot or something like that and then use it to get out also so you know you fly you fly a little bit away turn around defense matrix to block the damage before you lose your mech and then walk around a corner to maintain this sort of aggression so the main reason you want to play diva over another character like winston or wrecking ball is her defense matrix because it allows her to not only eat damage that's sent onto her and her teammates but also important cooldowns and ultimates too. Of course, it can't meet everything. It can't stop Zarya's primary fire, or Winston's Tesla cannon, or like a Junkrat trap, but it can do a lot. So it's extremely, extremely powerful. The main ways to use it are using it to push into enemies. So if you're diving onto something like an Ana or an Ash, using it to eat up their sleep dart or their coach gun as you're flying in can stop them from stopping you from getting onto them and allow you to continue their aggression and do a lot of damage to them or even kill them. That's one way to use it, but if you do go too hard, 
you can also use it to defend yourself. Whether you just use your defense matrix to block damage on you and back up so you can be healed up, or use it to use it as you're flying away, like um, flying and then canceling your boosters and turning around and eating damage on you so that your momentum takes you away from them while you're blocking all the damage on you, that's an option too. Another way and one of the most important things you can do with Defense Matrix is use it to protect your teammates. And that's really like the main thing you're gonna wanna be thinking about how you use a Defense Matrix is protecting your teammates. So for example, if there's a Tracer on the enemy team who's been looking like she wants to jump onto your Zenyatta or your Ana, if you watch for her positioning and then right as she goes onto them, you Defense Matrix them, the Tracer is not gonna get any value and oftentimes will be able to be killed afterwards too. So that's a really, really powerful thing that you can do. Um, on top of this, you can also eat ultimates that enemies send in. Not everything, of course, but something like Zarya's ultimate, Farah, or Cassidy's ultimate too, can be consumed by it. So when you think they have them, like they've waited a little while and they haven't used it for a bit, predicting it with Zarya's ultimate or reacting to the voice line from Cassidy and Farah will let you completely negate their ultimate. And so it's a very, very powerful thing for just a standard ability to be able to do. All right. Jumping into some more general gameplay tips. So, D.Va has the responsibility to both take care of teammates, but also to frag out. So you kind of have to be thinking about what you want to be doing with this and which of these two versions you want to be playing. The best rule of thumb is really to be thinking about like which of your teammates, which of the two teams has more long range damage. So, for example, if you're playing with an Ash and a Sojourn, and the enemy team has a Mei and like a Sombra or something like that, your team will definitely beat them long term spamming damage from the front. So you want to help your team maintain that situation. So instead of going for like hard aggressive dives onto the enemy, you're going to want to play more to just defend them. Just poke from main, eat damage onto them, um, counter dive, something that dives onto them. Like if a D.Va dives onto your Ash, you dive onto the D.Va and force the D.Va to go away, that sort of stuff. But if you're in the opposite situation where you are the one who needs to be diving in because your team doesn't deal damage as long or doesn't deal as consistent long range, long term damage, then that's where things change a little bit. So essentially, you need to be looking for some sort of an opportunity. You don't want to just jump into a group of five and die to the enemy. You want to be looking for someone to be low, um, them to be like pushing through a choke point and being vulnerable to a dive or something like somebody on your team being able to go with you. So for example, if your Genji or your Tracer is set up to jump onto the enemy's backline, you see them going in, that can be a trigger to just jump in and pursue a kill. Um, as we see in this this pick, this pick, clip here, we have Smurf jumping onto the Junkrat when he hears where he's ulting from, because he knows the Junkrat is going to be vulnerable and is also split from his team, and so he can't stop the D.Va from killing him. Now, you don't want to get too one-sided with both of these things, but you do have to be thinking about using some of them in both of these two play styles, but it's how you should generally be leaning. So moving on to the ultimate, D.Va's ultimate is extremely powerful. There's two main ways to use it. The main, the most common way that people do it like a lower level is just kind of tossing it into the air at a group at a 45 degree angle and hoping for the best. And while you can get a lot of value out of that and it's obviously effective in some ways, the best way to do it is to wait until you're low HP. When you are low HP and you'd normally be d you can then ult to make yourself have a full another life and get your mech back. But when you're doing that, you can also kind of get some of this hunt for kills sort of mentality going in. If you just wait until you're in low, you're like 100 HP or so, and then boost, fly up into the air, and then toss the bomb. That way you get to have a full another life, and so you made full usage of the first life essentially with the mech, and then you might also be able to get kills. So um, that's really, really good to do with that too. All right, now we're going to talk through some of Smurf's gameplay just so I can show you guys how a pro player plays. And I'm going to talk through what his decision making is, what he's looking to do and all that sort of stuff. So Smurf sees immediately there's a Fire Mercy on the enemy team. And while obviously this is going to be kind of a more of a niche situation, you are extremely, extremely good at burning down Fars and Mercies. So he looks to do that. When you are targeting a Far and a Mercy, you're going to want to go for the Mercy first because the Mercy is not being healed and therefore is the easier target. And essentially, as soon as the Mercy dies, the Farah dies too. So go for uh, Mercy first. Anywhere she goes, you can follow her and just burn her down. And just honestly, just completely hound her and she won't have a good time at all. Just like this. Dead. You know? And of course, as you saw there too, Diva does do a lot of damage. So if you happen to just 
be somewhere, then all of a sudden you're staring at the back of a Brigida, then, then burn her down too. What you will see a lot in these gameplay clips though is that Smurf is going to want to control high grounds very frequently. Diva is very good at accessing high ground, stopping enemies from being on high ground, and really denying them that advantage. It's extremely, extremely good for enemy teams to be on high grounds just because of the fact that it gives them places to back up to, um, it essentially allows them to control the angles in a, in a fight, and basically whoever controls high grounds in a match will essentially win, so you really, really want to deny them as much as possible, and you're going to see Smurf doing that. So whenever he's repositioning for a fight, he's likely to sit on the high ground if he doesn't have something else to be doing, and so we'll be there to <laughs> stop the enemy from taking the him waving at the bumper as he as he got he got trapped a little bit rude but as i talked about when you are playing in a situation in which you have either positional advantage or you just have more long range damage you don't really need to be diving too much he is consistently doing it to dive onto the farah because the farah will outspam his team over time and so um Stopping that damage output is like the second version that I talked about where you're looking to dive onto the enemy and stop them from dealing more damage to you over time and try and do that as fast as possible. So you're going to see that in this gameplay. That instead of like playing, taking it more slow and just taking the advantage, he's going to be pushing aggressively onto the enemy team. Another factor to include in the whole dive or not dive sort of thing is positional advantage. If you are playing on defense, you usually do simply have the positional advantage, so you don't need to go super aggro um, all the time. But if your team does get out damaged over time at range, then you know you still should be looking to do it. Or if uh, you see a good opportunity, then it's time to pounce onto that. And so that's basically what you've been seeing this whole gameplay clip is him just as soon as the far comes up close, the far gets in range, the far uses her boost, dies onto it immediately. Um, now he's going pretty, pretty very aggressive and is going to get out of it, but um, that's what he's been looking to do. And so it's given him this round, essentially. Like I said, whole game, just takes him down the Farah. Faras are pretty vulnerable, especially when um, they don't have a farm, they don't have a mercy with them anymore. So you always want to be chasing them down and hunting them down. All right, so we're moving on to the second round here, and you're going to see different gameplay coming from this because they're no longer playing against a Farah. Now he's playing against a Sombra, which changes up what he does, and it's going to give you guys a more standard show of what you should be doing as D.Va. So, D.Va really wants to play for positional advantages. You play to secure positional advantage, whether that's securing a high ground or forcing an enemy out of something, and then you want to look for opportunities to go on to or to protect your team. That's essentially what you do. Secure an advantage and then either protect your team or look for an opportunity. So, as you can see here, he ends up um, pushing into this high ground because it's going to give him a nice little off angle on the on the back line of the enemy, a nice little flank essentially. So he gets up here, happens to see an echo low, gets some damage onto her, and then is immediately on top of a Brigida that's stuck in a bad position. Since the Brigida is low, has low shield, and Smurf still has a bunch of HP, time to push onto that and it forces the enemy back. And uh, because Azaria bubbled the Brigida, she lived but not for too long because uh, he dies pretty soon. And that's the sort of dive stuff I was talking about. When you see an opportunity, you go for it. You don't want to go too far as you know, I'm going to show you right now with him going too far and end up dying. And you definitely don't want to face tank against Azari for too long because you will definitely just die against that. But um, it's his general gameplay style of looking for opportunities and then engaging in those opportunities. So you're going to see him re-engaging here end up walking into the enemy and he's looking at a lot of damage so same sort of thing with an opportunity and an opportunity doesn't have to be something like where you're securing a kill it can also be something just like this with walking up here and seeing an echo aggressing onto his enemy onto his team so he's going to dive onto her try and force her out and you don't have to like go for a kill every single time sometimes just tickling some damage onto them will be enough to force them away here he ends up trying to just contest the point for a while <clears throat> and ends up kind of trying to make the best out of a bad situation but ends up um ends up just being bullied by a lot of enemies and this is kind of why like divas changed more often or changed a lot from overwatch 2 or overwatch 1 sorry because she didn't have to do that as often and so in that situation you do want to be trying to like fly to one of the sides 
Um, contest the point as long as possible, but maybe not just stand in front of where the enemy is looking at you. So Smurf probably could have played a little better um, going to the opposite side of the point to split the enemy's attention or something like that. But here, you know, you can see Smurf just spazzing out and, you know, it kind of looks like he's just trolling or doing something weird. But what he's doing is he's trying to scout for the enemy Sombra because she has her ultimate. And since you have no animal capacity and you have like permanent beam of damage, essentially, you can find them pretty consistently. He didn't, so they ended up getting a kill on um, on his Kiriko, but that's what he was doing there. In like a lower tier, something that's not like, you know, a bunch of pros playing against each other, you're probably not going to you're going to see a lot of Sombra of a gameplay like that, but that is what you would do if you were in that situation. Here we see another opportunity being pushed. When Smurf does get this nano boost, he immediately just goes hard because it becomes so tanky at that point and there's an Ana just sitting in front of him. He doesn't end up getting the kill on the Ana right away, but it just completely softens up the whole enemy team, gets him a kill on the Brigida, forces this Echo to go in too hard, and um, he and his team are going to win the fight because of this. So it's a very good play. And that's some sort of a trigger that I've been talking about, these opportunities, whether you see you know, an enemy being low HP, an enemy being, an enemy being out of position, you having a nano boost thrown on to you. Now, of course, you don't want to just go into five with a nano boost by yourself, you'll die. But with the knowledge that you still can die, and if you have any sort of team follow up, it's just pretty safe to just go super hard there. So he does. Even though you don't want to be just standing in front of an enemy Zarya for too long, because he can get some of this HP healed up, he's still trying to focus out the Zarya, which is why you can see him poking him out a little bit. Poking him out a little bit, trying to force a bubble or something like that. Maybe his team focuses him down to get a weird kill on the Zarya, something like that. He unfortunately does get pushed into the well um, and hacked at the same time, which is just unlucky. But that is nothing really to learn from that. That's just that's just kind of tragic. What are you going to do about that one? Again, he's scouting again for the Sombra. So here you're going to see him taking the high ground again. High grounds are really, really advantageous just because you can use them and kite back from them. Like if the Zarya looks at him right now, he can back up further and the Zarya will be hitting the bottom of this and won't be able to deal damage to him. So he controls the engagement essentially. And so he gets a lot of value out of that. So it's a good idea to just fly basically from high ground to high ground as much as you can. Um, another really important thing to talk about on D.Va is when to push and when to kite. With any sort of tank, you wanted to push in with, with advantages and to kite away from disadvantages. When he goes in and forces a Sombra out, he's looking at an Echo, a Brigida Rally, a Zarya. It's not time to go in, so he backs up. Backs up, tries to kite it out, and not have to like take the full brunt of that damage. Even though you are pretty tanky now and you can go back in, but it's just about kiting it for a little bit, right? Pushing into the Zarya a little bit there, ends up getting hacked, getting pushed. He pushed a little bit too hard, but does something really useful here with the mech too. When you do use your mech, to re when you try and get back into your mech with your ultimate, you only have 150 HP right now. As you can see, he gets knocked down to 10 for a second, up to 36. But at this point, if he uses his mech right here to recall it, he will likely die to the Brigida because he can get um, he can get whipped with the the bash ability. So what he does is he walks just around the corner, pops it, and it gives him just that little bit of extra time to survive that. And it's super super useful to do that. So always be kind of aware of like. If there's a place nearby, you can get you can just barely walk around to try and be a little bit safer when you try and remake. The team ends up losing this round, but making sure you're controlling high grounds, kiting advantage, kiting disadvantages, pushing advantages, following up on pushing into enemies when they have the ability to deal more damage than your team does from range, looking to sustain your team when it's the opposite. These sort of things will make you do really well in Diva. Like as you can see in the first round of gameplay, he was constantly dying, diving the Farah because the Farah was just gonna constantly output, like constantly output and chunk damage onto his team. And so he's diving her. It would be the same thing if like, there was an Ash or like an Echo flying around. You want to be trying to just constantly put those threats out as long as you have like, as long as you're not gonna be feeding to do it right. And since he was on defense and was relatively safe, he wasn't. So if you're looking for some more Overwatch 2 content, then make sure to check out these videos I have right here. Like I said, I'm a top 100 Overwatch player, so I have lots of videos and things to share with you guys.